Welcome to 32 and 32, where we count... Anyway, that's beside the point. At the end of the day, it's a business. If you're the Rams, you are officially coming off the absolute worst performance in the Super Bowl ever. I think Robert Kraft is uh, peas in someone else's pod. <laughs> I mean, yeah, Super Bowl wins are so old. I mean, the rings are probably to dust right now. So, not about the Eagles today. We're talking about the Bears. Yeah. So, as usual, let's take a look first at their free agent signings. Day. Thanks for watching, folks. That is today's uh, analysis of the Minnesota Vikings. <laughs> Welcome to 32 and 32, where we cover one team each day for 32 straight days, all leading up to the season opener on Thursday Night Football. Today we are covering the men of high voltage. Be careful, don't underestimate them. They may shock you. The L.A. Chargers. Men of high voltage. The men of high voltage. So should we be expecting Jason Statham to show up? Maybe. <laughs> mm. Crank fan, sorry. <laughs> I'm a Jason Statham fan too. Or we can, you know, try and go Hobbs and Shaw. You know, they, they you know, they run into the light skinned Superman, it just elbow light quarterback, you know, Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> now I'm getting we're getting too deep in that. All right, <coughs> LA Chargers. Mm. So this is one of the more talented teams in the West, right? Right. And probably one of the more t loaded more talented teams in the NFL in general. And they did really well last year. We talked a little bit about them when discussing Kansas City, which they finished thirteen and three, and were in contention for the number one. Not not yeah, the number one seed overall. But the fact that they were in contention for the number one seed just shows how competitive the AFC really was last year. Yeah, the AFC it was a, it was a tight race for the top. I mean, and the LA Chargers, I didn't really pay a whole lot of attention to them last season because they were just pretty much in that gray area until like the very end but I mean when they had that come from behind victory against Pittsburgh when they went to Arrowhead and knocked off the Chiefs and that's when a lot of people started taking notice like this Chargers team looks like they're for real I mean this Chargers team they've been winning and it just got to a point of can this Chargers team actually maybe compete for a top spot in the yeah. AFC and, and they handled they handled Baltimore in, in the in the wild card game, which was a measure of revenge, considering what Baltimore did to them on the road during the regular season. Yeah, and and in part, while yes, I do get the Chargers for coming out with a good game plan, uh, it almost kind of I don't know. It almost seemed like John Harbaugh just forgot how to call games, and not until the fourth quarter, at least. Uh, and I, I looked at that game. It was a wild card game in Baltimore. I mean, there's a lot of, you know, excitement for Baltimore. Uh, you, know, you have a Lamar Jackson, and it seemed that Baltimore was a team that can just shock everybody. But, I mean, you look at, you know, how the Chargers how this Chargers team performed, they methodically dominated the Ravens in mm. all phases mm. of the game until, like, what, maybe like the last two minutes of the game? Well, the second half of the fourth quarter, um, Baltimore got in two quick touchdowns. But, I mean, throughout the whole game, it just seemed that this Chargers team just completely just suffocated, I mean, the Ravens. Well, well the, the big problem was the next week when they just totally bombed against New England. That, that, that Phillip was, Rivers it, still winless against Tom Brady in the playoffs. I mean, one thing about Phillip Rivers and what I've seen from him, it, he's not really showing his age. I mean, you look at how he's been playing. It's just, and I feel that the only thing Phil Rivers needs, and I feel that the reason why he's still playing is because he wants a Super Bowl. And it's unfortunate for Rivers that, like, here his his second, only the second time in his career does he have a team that could potentially be Super Bowl caliber is right at the end of his career because he, he is, he's getting up there in age. He will be 40, I want to say, in three years. I think he's going to, what, his 16th, 17th season? Yeah, you know, you got to remember, he came in uh, the same same year as Ben Roethlisberger and Eli Manning, uh, that 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 uh, 04 draft class. Yeah, that that was just a, a, a big fiasco. I mean, like, like, like uh, what if what if the Chargers didn't trade Eli Manning? Just yeah. what if? And I'm pretty sure the Chargers are looking back like, thank God we traded Eli and we ended up going ahead and got Phillip Rivers. Thank God. Well, then again, you do have to take into consideration that Eli has two Super Bowl championships and Rivers has none. Well, I'm just looking at how, the, like, if you look at a comparison between the, both quarterbacks, how they're playing now. 
Oh yeah. I'm not really looking at the pass. I'm just, like from that aspect, from the two, from the Super Bowl aspect, the Chargers would have already gotten two Super Bowls. And, you know, and it's also unfortunate too because the the Chargers' last Super Bowl win, window before this was essentially wasted with with Philip Rivers' uh, developmental years. Because, I mean, he was not a Super Bowl winning quarterback his first three seasons in the NFL. Well, I mean, he was still young, still trying to evolve his game. Which was arguably, what, like, I don't know, that Chargers team had a, a better roster than this Chargers team. And that was the Chargers team that had Antonio Gates in his prime. It had LaDamiel Thomason in his prime. You had um, Darren, a young Darren Sproles. And, like... And this was like I think that was before Sproles Prime, mm-hmm. and still Sproles was was still a form was still, you know, a game changer at that time for the Chargers. You know, and uh, and uh, they had uh, oh gosh, who was there? Or they had two really good wide receivers. I forget. They escaped. It was like one was Callaway. <sighs> was Wasn't that? McCardell on that team? Keenan McCardell. Keenan McCardell. Yeah, Keenan McCarter was on that offense, so they had the offense. And my gosh, the defense was just shut down. Um, I remember that the uh, San Diego Chargers ended up playing the New England Patriots in '07, in, in the in the year that they they went undefeated in the regular season in the AFC um, in the AFC title game and. They held that offense that was averaging almost 50 points a game to three field goals in the first half. So that was a talented team that didn't have a Super, Super Bowl minded quarterback. A Super Bowl ready quarterback. But now we have a Philip Rivers who's a lot more evolved. And, you know, after years of, you know, struggling, you know, as far as his team, we haven't really seen Philip Rivers like drop off despite probably the lackluster performance in his team yeah. over the years. And, I mean, that's what I like about Phil Rivers. I mean, he's a team player. I mean, you're going to get 110% out of him no matter what's going on. And he's well-seasoned. And, I mean, I think I have a reason of why he hasn't really showed his age. And it seems that his um, seems that his lovely wife has been doing her best to keep him young. I mean, you see all the kids that he has. I mean, come on. When <laughs> when you get to that, I mean, when you get a whole lot of it, because I I feel that Cam Newton, he said in an interview that he was going to fast from it for a month. And Philip Rivers was like, well, good luck with that. I can't even go 72 hours without it. So, I mean, you're getting a whole lot of it. I mean, you're going to play well, and you're going to be light on your feet, and you're going to be well-focused and level-minded. Don't you think? <laughs> No comment. <laughs> I can talk about that. Well, I know, but I, I I don't get in another man's bed. I don't neither. But but you just did. But <laughs> shut up. <laughs> just saying, you know. To the wife of Philip Rivers, you are definitely a trooper. <laughs> I so, applaud you for being such a supportive wife. We if if, if I was an L.A. Chargers fan, I would salute you, ma'am. Anywho. <laughs> so, I mean, the Chargers must have a lot of faith in their current roster because they were very inactive in free agency. And, of course, they just drafted draft picks, I guess, because they had to. Uh, but, I mean, a, a aging Thomas Davis and Tyro Tyrod Taylor. Taylor, like, that's your backup quarterback now? Tyrod Taylor could play. I mean, I still got a little faith hey, okay, in him. So, okay. so if Rivers goes down, I, 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 I would... Well, I would be halfway comfortable with putting Tyrod in. I, I do like this analogy of Tyrod Taylor. <sighs> he is an above-average backup and a below-average starter. That is actually very accurate. That's, I mean, during some in Buffalo, he did lead Buffalo to their first playoff appearance in what in the two thousands. Yeah, with a team that could maybe score ten points a game. And then he gets to Cleveland. I mean, he got. To, I mean, I had a lot of high expectations for him going to Cleveland, but at the same time, I knew it was going to be a matter of time before Baker Mayfield ended up starting. But I didn't think it was going to be in the fashion of you know Tyrod sticking up the joint completely to the point to where Hugh Jackson had to take him out. You know. Hmm. 
But with Tyrod Taylor, I mean, I feel that if Phil Rivers ever went down, I feel that Tyrod can step up to the plate and can lead the Chargers in the right direction for the duration that Phil Rivers may be out. Say that's if Phil Rivers get injured, God forbid. <coughs> Because I mean, let's let's just be honest. The Chargers have a much better chance of winning with Phillip in than Tyrod, which is very obvious as the sky is blue and the grass is green. Sure about that? Uh, I'm sure. I am very positive. I'm I'm talking about as positive as you know what? Not going there because you're going just going to stop recording. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm sure about it too because. Uh... I love me some Louis R. Strong, and he taught me the colors of the sky and the grass. This is not a wonderful world, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I'm a bit curious as to why the Chargers weren't at least a little bit more active in free agency. Um, I guess they got their backup for now, but and I almost kind of feel like after being released by Carolina, uh, Davis is just kind of title chasing right now, and... I guess so. San Diego is the best opportunity, which they are. L.A. You said San Diego. Oh, yeah. I know. It's still kind of new. I know. But whatever, though. I mean, who are we? You know, ever, in San Diego, they at least do it out. In, in Los Angeles, their second their second fiddle to their second fiddle a very to the powerful Rams team. The Rams, and not and, just and, the Rams. And, and, and but like, and here's my thing: like, that, that, like, I still cannot wrap my mind around why. Because I mean, the Chargers have always been a franchise. Being mean, being in San Diego, San Diego is a low market. I mean, to like, let's just be honest: for football, that that's a low market. But at the same time, this was a franchise that that that's always stood out. So why go to L? I mean, after the Rams moved from St. Louis to L.A. Why do you want to go ahead and copy them and want to move to L.A.? I mean, yes, L.A. has proved to be a large market. I mean, look at the, what the Rams have been doing. But if you feel that because the market was so low that y'all had to move, it's like you're moving into another low market for yourself. That market's already been taken by the Rams. So it's like the Chargers, they pretty much wanted to – they basically – from moving to San Diego to L.A., they pretty much maintain a low market. Yeah, you're, you're basically the – I mean, when you're playing in a stadium that's only 28,000, and meanwhile the Rams are getting a stadium built that's going to pretty much become a pinnacle of where you want to play football at when you become a pro. You know, it's like my mind, the Chargers have gone from being unique, uniquely established in San Diego to uh, the, f the fifth most recognizable team in, in the Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. Like I mean, I mean, you're 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 even second fiddle to Oakland and San Francisco, who are just still in the Los Angeles area. And like I'm like I'm still like highly disappointed in that Chargers front office. Like y'all could have done a better job if you wanted to relocate him anywhere, locate him to where they'll still remain as a uniquely established a franchise because that was pretty much the Chargers la like trademark, a uniquely established franchise. Just think about this: the Chargers are not. The only team in Los Angeles with the initials A L A L L A C. The Clippers. Who have a bigger fan base in Los Angeles than the Chargers. Oh, uh, duh. <laughs> duh. <laughs> Anywho. <laughs> I mean, they got Kawhi Leonard and Paul George now. It's gotten bigger. Do you know how many bandwagoners have joined? Do you know how many bandwagoners are just so open to buy on social media? Like, dude, you a bandwagon knowing damn well the Suns was probably your team at first. So, you know, okay, we're a little bit off topic. but Yeah. <laughs> let's get to the draft real quick. That front office just pisses me off. Um, I actually did not have a lot of time to really look over this draft class. It's uh, other than Jerry Tillery. I mean, who is a you know. dominant defensive tackle coming out of Notre Dame. Uh, and I feel that he's going to uh, add more power to that Chargers defense. Actually, now that I think about it, yeah, Drew, uh, Drew uh, Tranquil. Um, I'm sorry, I just totally forgot. <laughs> He was the he's a two time captain for the Irish and he was a key part of the uh playoff de playoff Irish defense in eighteen where you had uh if I remember correctly, something like eighty six tackles, nine for loss, three and a half sacks, and uh, 
something like six and, or seven and, pass breakups. And he's like, he's a very athletic linebacker, six foot two, two hundred thirty five pounds. No, that I mean the lar- the Chargers they lost their special teams captain, uh, Kyle Emanuel. So Tranquil could probably could be <coughs> possibly a uh, a potential replacement for him. Yeah, the only one the one that I'm familiar with is in. in Unfortunately, don't know any really statistics behind him, but uh, I do know that Nasir Adderley is the cousin of a Hall of Famer player from the '60s who was um, on the the uh, Raiders and Packers squads. A guy that I'm actually interested in is Easton Stick, coming from North Dakota State. I mean, he was drafted in the fourth round, but he pretty much carried on that that Wentz legacy at North Dakota State. I mean, still maintained that dominance uh, as far as you know, get into the national championship. So, I mean, hopefully, I mean, and I'm, and I think East Stick's time is going to come a little sooner than later, considering how old Philip Rivers is getting and how much longer he may have. Uh, so, I mean, East and Stick, we might see him a little sooner than later. Hmm. So, what are, you, what are your expectations for? Um, I, I feel like for the Chargers, I mean, they didn't lose a whole lot. They didn't lose a lot of people in the offseason. I mean, they still have – I mean, Antonio Gates is still quite the performer at tight end. Uh, Melvin Gordon, he's going to continue to improve. Phillip Rivers, I mean, he's Phillip Rivers. I feel the defense is going to take a step up as well. So I feel like their ceiling could be 13-3. and three. That's their ceiling. I know it's kind of high, but well, – That's I what do they did see- last year. I do see that as their ceiling and their floor. I can see their floor being around 11 and five. Fair enough. I've so a, a tight window, but that's just the type of faith I have in the Chargers going to next season. I do see the Chargers being very competitive in AFC. Once again, I think they are the top challenger to Kansas city. They and, are. And the only challenger in the West of Kansas city. And I feel that if the Chargers were to meet the pages in the playoffs this season, I feel the Chargers would probably have no problem other than, if you could stop Tom Brady, which Tom Brady has one of the quickest releases in the league. I mean, considering, I mean, the Chargers, they do have Joey Bosa. Wait, wait, Joe, wait, which one's the oldest? It's, yeah, it's Joey Bosa's the oldest. And then Nick Bosa when they went to San Francisco. Right. I kind of get a mix up sometimes. And you got Melvin Ingram. What are you saying? All Bosa's look like? Um, well, they're family, so yeah. <laughs> He's laughing, I'm just sitting there just like, like. I had to. I will be investing in a kendo stick, uh, probably soon, or a steel chair. Or some brass knuckles, but I am, um, I'm, I'm, I'm actually gonna be, I'm very, very positive that the Chargers are gonna be gonna make a lot of noise this season, and I, I, yes, I am sure, and I am very positive, and I'm talking about Magic Johnson positive. <laughs> let me stop. Let me stop. Let me stop. You went there again. 